Thank you very much, and Timo. I am very happy to see uh, everybody and many familiar faces among the participants of, the, of this webinar. And it's great that uh, uh, and really surprising that those, those topics are raising such a high interest. So in my presentation, uh, I would like to shortly highlight certain things related to the needs and opportunities for cross-border monitoring of forest fires and biodiversity. So this is uh, not a kind of like really detailed overview, but I was uh, I would like to uh, emphasize certain of the key points from my point of view. So uh, on one on the previous our uh, project webinar, I presented to you the studies of old growth forests uh, along the Finnish-Russian border and. Uh, one of the outcome, just to bring you into the background of old growth forest uh, of this study, was that the biggest nodes of high conservation wo uh, value forests uh, were located along the border. And uh, uh, while in Finland, most of the nodes, I mean, the very important nodes for conservation, were protected. But at, in Russia, in, in the site of Republic of Karelia, only two nodes were protected. And those nodes were mentioned in today's Paris presentation about Kostamuk's uh, uh, Zapovednik, for example. And the, but the most no, important node for the conservation at the moment are not uh, protected. And in Russia, for example, those nodes are under the harvesting by one of the companies. And uh, uh, if we combine this connectivity information with the Finnish Meteorological Institute forecast related to the number of fire danger days, we, it's quite obvious that uh, 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 those forests in future, the number of fire danger days will increase for 15 up to 80 percent, depending on the climate change scenario. So it means uh, in the current situation, we have a lot of opportunities to protect, protect biodiversity, which is still uh, existing along the Finnish-Russian border. But climate change will bring a lot of uncertainty about future uh, presence uh, or existence of such kind of territories. So if we think about cross-border monitoring of forest fires and biodiversity, from my point of view, we would need a high-resolution forest fire forecasting methods. So today we've seen activities from a, a Finnish uh, Meteorological Institute from Arbonaut presenting the models and tools. So it's quite important that we will have in future opportunity uh, uh, opportunities to have a stand level information so that this kind of forest fire forecasting methods could be integrated into practical forest management. While we are talking about forest fire forecasting, I think uh, uh, this uh, pests and disease forecasting, is, it's also quite important that those will be as well integrated into the uh, practical forest management. For example, from uh, for example, forest fauna owner point of view, it would be very important to know like under what conditions and, and at what time uh, there is a high risk for forest fire or hi high risk for forest uh, uh, pests and diseases, for example, for bark beetle. And how the forest, for example, owner can act right now to mitigate, mitigate those risks in future. Then we need the tools for remote assessment of biodiversity. There are quite a lot of areas er uh, along the border which are not accessible, but by several reasons, by political reasons. Uh, some areas are not accessible simply because of the logistics uh, by a very remote location. So we need the tools to be able to assess the state of the biodiversity of those areas using remote sensing instruments. And uh, this uh, assessment of the biodiversity can be done through a detailed assessment of the forest structure. Of course, we will not be able to see, uh, for example, minor mushrooms or bugs, which are kind of like red listed species. But assessing the structure would give us already quite a good opportunity to, to check the function of those ecosystems. We would need also new approaches to balance conflicting goals, because when we are managing the forests, we are always uh, kind of having different, let's say, d uh, goals. So one forest owner may have a goal on forest production, another forest owner may have a goal on forest protection. Uh, new thing, is which is kind of very popular, is carbon sequestration or resi forest resilience to, to uh, several changes. 
And these those approaches could be tackled through introduction of uh, uh, precision forest management, uh, which will be based on new modern technologies and which would allow to maximize the resilience of forest uh, to forest fires. I am uh, just would like to highlight certain of new technologies where we are at the moment working at Luke and where we see the opportunities. So I think the opportunities for uh, for the changes are in at the moment from my point of view are in drones, in clouds and in algorithms. So using drones, we can carry out, for example, detailed mapping of fuel load. We can actually measure directly the moisture of the fuel load under the different weather conditions. And we are already doing those tests at Luca. And, and later in uh, October, we will have a uh, following BioCarelia webinars where we would like to present the outcomes of those research activities. It is possible to use drones also to uh, to map the biodiversity metrics or to study the, for example, dead wood allocation. Of course, those drones and satellites are bringing huge amounts of data and this, uh, this data need to be processed. And uh, from my point of view, for example, cloud processing or powerful uh, distributed computing will give us an opportunity to, to reduce the cost and increase the speed of data processing. Additionally, in terms of collaboration, when you use a cloud, you can, of course, share the data quickly between your partners. But to be able to combine, for example, drone and clouds, we would need algorithms to map fuel loads at high resolution, to map biodiversity structure. And there are several approaches and there are several uh, ways how to do it, for example, based on artificial intelligence or combining uh, big training data sets with remote sensing data. Uh, so combination of clouds, drones, satellites and algorithms could bring us a new uh, uh, ways and methods how to manage the forest resources. In Luke, we are try trying nowadays to work with different drone technologies already mentioned by Tina for, uh, map for early detection of pests and diseases and also for mapping of the uh, forest structure. Those uh, instruments could be integrated with, uh, for example, Sentinel, Sentinel satellite data, providing information practically uh, several times per, per month over big territories. This integration between the Sentinel satellite data, as you can see from the slide in the background, there is a Sentinel satellite and on top there is a, 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 a test area flown by the drone, can be this conduction of data fusion can be done through utilization of the artificial intelligence and uh, through, through utilization of neural networks. And uh, uh, the opportunity here is to upscale from small scale, from small level observation, which are based on research plots or individual stands, up to, for example, big areas or countries or even cross border areas. Uh, additionally, the development of laser scanning technology is going further. Today we've seen very interesting results and very promising uh, models presented by Arbonaut on using uh, a national uh, laser scanning covering uh, the whole country territory. Uh, the, few, the laser scanning technology is developing and nowadays already at Luke we are using the laser scanners uh, uh, installed on the drones or on mobile vehicles like cars or uh, quadricycles or, 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 or on human. And for example, here you can see one example of this laser scanner. And it actually, it's exactly the same device which is installed in Tesla cars. So it's exactly the same model, but we, uh, we take it from Tesla car and put it into, into the drone and on a human. Those laser scanners with very high point density, providing a lot of new opportunities. So we can scan the whole tree. We can scan de in detail, not only the tree location, but we can, for example, with those laser scanners, measure directly the diameter of the trees, the size of the branches, the amount of biomass, the structure of the crowns directly from the laser scanning data. And I think for future, it will give us really better opportunities to switch from uh, traditional forest management to so-called precise digital forest management. Uh, 
Uh, today, uh, we had we pair in his presentation also raised an issue about this close to nature forest management and letters. In our institute, we are doing a lot of research about continuous cover forestry as one of the method, and we are trying to evaluate the role of continuous cover forestry uh, not only in the wood production and biodiversity conservation, but also uh, in uh, developing uh, fire resilient forestry. And here is one example, like using drone data and uh, uh, running continuous cover forest management over certain stands. We can identify quite many parameters, uh, providing us an opportunity for so-called smart forest management. Uh, with those words, I would like to conclude kind of this. You see, we have a lot of uh, opportunities with new technologies, and I hope that in uh, our future webinars, we will present you some of those opportunities. Some of the joint efforts will be presented on a, a final InnoForestU project conference, which was already announced today by Tina. So actually, the pro this conference will be uh, this Friday, and uh, uh, some of the innovative cross-border technologies and innovative uh, uh, data management systems will be presented within the forest, within this conference. In BioCarelia project, we will have following webinars in, uh, in October and later this year, where we will present the outcomes from uh, BioCarelia project. So uh, with those words, I would like to uh, say to thank you for participation in this webinar and would be very happy to uh, discuss questions if there are any questions.